first video in the series on human evolution. Before you continue with this series, make sure that you understand the principles of evolution as outlined in the previous video. This is what's called a phylogenetic tree, which shows the relatedness of human beings to other of the hominid species. Uh, we're going to come back to this phylogeny or this phylogenetic tree in a little bit. I want to begin by looking at some of the images that are associated with evolution when we talk about human evolution. This is a typical kind of image, and there are a number of problems with an image like this. Firstly, this shows human evolution from chimpanzees, and we are not descended from chimpanzees, uh, so that is a problem, but we're all gorillas, but we're going to look at that uh, in a little bit. The second image, or the second problem with this image, is that it shows progression from an ape-like individual to a white male. Um, the, the white skin, white coloration, uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, that's actually a Neanderthal trait. It's not a Homo sapiens uh, trait specifically. Um, and so that image is incorrect. It shouldn't be showing a white male. It should be showing a, a black or a dark skinned individual. The third problem that I have with this image is that it's showing evolution to a male, which leaves out 50% of the rest of the species. Um, we're not going to deal with that. That is a, a, a more, that's a question for a different time. Um, the problem that I have with images like this is that it, when you see images like this over and over and over, they develop a subliminal kind of understanding of evolution, which actually has a number of misconceptions in it that people are not even aware of. And so as we go through this section, I'm going to try and address some of those misconceptions um, in the hopes that as you learn about human evolution, uh, you'll get the facts and, and get the story straight. Uh, I quite like this image uh, in terms of, of evolution. Uh, the influx of technology is said to be changing the structure of our brain. Um, whether that is a, an acquired characteristic or whether that actually is a genetic change that's going to be passed on to future generations has yet to be seen. Uh, but I quite like what this is, is implying and where this kind of seems to be going. All right, so as I said, the big question uh, that most of us have when it comes to human evolution is, are we actually descended from chimps? Uh, the short answer is no, we aren't. And we're going to look at, at where we are actually coming from. So who or what are we currently related to? Okay, if we go back to grade 10, in grade 10 we did classification and you learnt about these different taxa, these different clades uh, of classification, starting at the bottom with the whole of life, which is then divided into three domains. Each domain is then subdivided into kingdoms, phyla, classes, order, family, genera, and ending with species being the, most, uh, being the smallest group of individuals. If we now look at human beings using that same classification system, uh, and remember this is initially, although we've developed it, uh, this initial idea of a hierarchical classification system was developed by Carl Linnaeus, who's the father of taxonomy. Okay, so if we look at human beings, starting at the bottom, we are in the animal kingdom. Lots of people have an issue with that because they see us as being different to the animals. Uh, this comes from a faith perspective where uh, God made the animals and then God made man as a separate creation. Um, when we look biologically, if you go back to the evolution section, there is lots of evidence to suggest uh, that human beings are actually not a special creation in that sense, that we are actually part of the animal kingdom, that we are animals like all the other animals. What makes us different, uh, there's a whole bunch of sociology uh, PhDs that you can go and do studying that looking at what is it that makes human beings different from the other species. There are things like our ability uh, to produce uh, art, to appreciate culture, uh, the fact that we have sexual intercourse for fun as opposed to for procreation, um, the ability to experience and play and have fun, that that is seen as, as something unique as well. There are a lot of different things that uh, supposedly make us different from the other animals. From a faith perspective, the answer is simple. What makes us different from other animals would be the fact that we uh, believe we have a soul or a spirit, that we're not just flesh and blood, that there is something spiritual to us as well. Um, but that question is probably best answered either by your sociology professor, if you go on and do sociology, or by your faith leader, uh, whoever that might be. Okay, so we are in the animal kingdom. That is, is we take it as red from this point forward. 
Within the animal kingdom, we belong to the phylum chordata, uh, chordates in English. Those are things that have a backbone. We are then in the class mammalia or mammals. Those are organisms with fur or hair that produce milk that give birth to live young. Within mammals, we are in the order primata, primates. Uh, these are organisms that have collarbones and have grasping fingers. Within that, we are in the family hominid, and there, there are subclassifications in there, which we will come to in a bit, but just broad brushstrokes at the moment. So hominids, these are organisms that have 3D vision and relatively flat faces and a bunch of other things which we'll talk about just now. We are in the genus Homo, Homo uh, or Homo sapiens, which is us. We have an upright posture. We walk on two legs. We are bipedal uh, and we have pretty large brains in relation to the rest, the size of the rest of us. And then we, our species is Homo sapiens. In fact, our species for modern human beings who live, who are alive today, is not just Homo sapiens, but is Homo sapiens subspecies sapiens. So Homo sapiens sapiens, uh, which Homo sapiens means wise man. Um, homo meaning man, so we are wise men, so we are wise, wise men. Okay, so genus Homo, uh, we've got a high forehead, we've got very thin skull bones, that's one of the things that differentiates us from some of the other Homo species. Okay, if we look at a phylogenetic tree, and remember in the grade 12 exam you can't call this thing a, a phylogeny or a cladogram, although it is those two things, uh, and those are the terms that you would use at university. At school level, remember there's always a distinction between what we teach you at school and what goes on in universities. So at school level, um, the Department of Education is insisting that you use the term phylogenetic tree. That whole thing, phylogenetic tree, not just tree, not just phylogeny, not just phylogenetic, it must be phylogenetic tree. Okay, so if we look at the phylogenetic tree for mammals, so if we go back just a sec, Mammals, remember, we're in the phylum chordata, things with a backbone. So now we're looking at the class mammalia. Okay, so here we are in the class mammalia. Now, you'll be pleased to know, you do not need to know any of these names. This is just background information to help you understand how it is that uh, human beings are classified. Okay, so you will be aware of the fact that there are different types of mammals, that there are egg-laying mammals, and that there are those that give birth to live young mammals. Uh, so those are your theria and your prototheria. Now your prototheria, those are things like your platypus and your spiny anteaters. Your theria, those that give birth to live young, you may well be aware that there are both placental mammals and marsupial mammals. Marsupial man mammals are, in almost every case, found in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, placental mammals are found on the rest of the continents. So your marsupials, you know, things like kangaroos, wombats, wallabies, um, opossums, uh, there are, if you know anything about the carnivores, the marsupial carnivores, um, the Tasmanian devil, for example, is a marsupial uh, carnivore. Okay, so those are your marsupials. Marsupials give birth to live young at a very immature stage. Um, so if you think of a kangaroo, when a kangaroo gives birth, its little baby is probably two centimeters big, if that. The, there's no pain or anything involved. I mean, the, the kangaroo barely knows it's given birth. Um, and the little... Uh, offspring then crawls up and it is then it continues its development inside a pouch. That's what a marsupial mammal is. Placental mammals, we retain our offspring for a much longer period of time um, before we give birth to them. There are three super orders uh, in the infraclass eutheria and uh, there's a lot of debate at the moment about how these things are classified and grouped so this is just one expression of it. Anyway, um, the superorders are based geographically, so you can see the African superorder branched off first, and then later on, the northern and the American, um, northern meaning North European, kind of the whole of, of Europe, um, and then American is both started in South America, and then uh, they're spread out over North America as well, so that's the American group. The African group, the superorder Afrotheria, Interesting to notice that elephants are in that group, as are hyraxes, dussies. So in fact, an elephant is more closely related to a dussie than it is to any of the other um, normal kind of mammals that we would know. Um, this African group, the, the superorder Afrotheria, what makes them different is the shape of their nose. Okay, So if you think of an elephant, it has a long proboscis. If you think of a, a sea cow, there are a number of different types. So if we look at a dugong, for example, the dugong's also got a very um, prehensile kind of nose. 
Likewise, elephant shrews, um, your hyraxes, your dussies too, also have a little bit of a prehensile nose. That's what classic, what that's the kind of predominant trait in that group. If we look at the American superorder, the Xenatha, anteaters, your glyptodons, those of you who are into your dinosaurs, uh, ground sloths. So glyptodons and, and ground sloths are extinct. Uh, tree sloths remain armadillos and anteaters, the other anteaters. Um, they are all in that group. And then the remaining group is the superorder uh, Borotheria, your northern group. And they are divided into two groups, your superprimates and your Laurasians. Laurasians coming from the continent of Laurasia, uh, which is when the northern and southern continents split from each other. So you've got Gondwana land in the south and Laurasia in the north. Uh, the Laurasian group, that includes most of the things that we understand to be mammals. So your ungulates. Ungulates are things that um, chew their food in a particular way and have a particular set of stomachs, etc. So your horses, rhino rhinos, camels, pigs, uh, ruminants, those are all of your different uh, deer and um, antelope species, hippopotamuses, cetaceans, those are whales, dolphins, uh, porpoises, bats, pangolins, and your normal carnivores. So your cat family, your dog family, uh, those are all carnivores. So all of those are Laurasians. And then there's the super primates, which is us. Um, so the primate group, we are linked more closely with rodents. So mice, uh, rats, sh uh, those kind of things, rabbits and hares, tree shrews, and something called a kalugo, which I'd never heard of before uh, doing this video and preparing these slides. Um, so that's an, something that I've learned. Okay, so that's how we get to primates, from mammals to primates. Now, if we look just at our primates, these are primates, so lemurs, tarsiers, and what are called your anthropoids, your monkeys, your apes, and your humans. Notice that human beings are not classified as apes. Uh, so those of you who have an issue with evolution, you can take a deep breath. We are not part of the apes group. Okay. All right, so now we're starting with the order primate. Okay, so again, all the information in here in terms of uh, the infra orders, etc., you don't need to know that information. This is background information. What you do need to know is from the purple superfamily down. That you do need to know. All right, so we've got our order of primate divided into two groups. The suborder that is not listed there, uh, lorises and lemurs. Those are your lemurs there at the top left. Okay, so and lorises are, are similar. Along with tarsiers, who are actually in a separate, separate suborder, so your tarsiers are there at the top right um, with the big eyes, they are what are known as prosimians. Okay, prosimians. In other words, pro meaning very similar to pre, before the simian group. The rest of us uh, are all simians. We are all um, in this, this group together, monkey-like group. Okay, your prosimians. Now again, there's a lot of a lot of discussion about whether this group, the infra order, should be called simia forms, simians in English, um, or anthropoidia. A lot of people are leaning away from anthropoidia because it can be confused with other things, which is why I've included the simi forms. Okay. So your simians are your monkeys and your apes and human beings. From that infra order, there's another subcategory called a parv order. Um, and there we di differentiate between your new world monkeys, your old world monkeys, and other groups. Okay, so your new world monkeys, the new world obviously being uh, mostly southern hemisphere, old world being mostly northern hemisphere. Okay, those are your monkeys. And then we have this super family, hominoids, hominoidia. Now, spelling counts, ladies and gentlemen. You need to learn your spellings here because if you spell the word incorrectly, um, it can very easily be confused. So notice we've got hominoidia as a superfamily, hominidae as family, hominidae as the subfamily, and hominini as the tribe. Okay, lots of similarity. You need to check your spellings carefully here. All right, so hominoids refer to all the species that look vaguely like us, okay, human-like. So we're in the superfamily hominoidia. The gibbons are known as the lesser apes. Um, they are, are slightly different to the rest of us because they diverged from our line of, of evolution, our evolutionary history, much earlier. In the family hominidae, those are things that we would call hominids. And your hominids are your great apes, 
and your human beings. Notice the lesser apes and the great apes are separate from humans. So humans are not considered to be apes. Okay, then we've got the subfamily homininae, who are known as the hominins, hominins, I should say. Um, so you've got your orangutans, who are hominids, um, but they're not in the same subfamily with us. Okay, um, Or orang-utang is the correct pronunciation, but we will say orangutans. Okay, if we look at the subfamily hominineae, we are classified with our gorillas as our kind of cousins, if you like. But, our, but gorillas are not in our tribe. Okay, so our tribe is hominini, hominins. Um, and within that hominins tribe, we have chimpanzees, bonobos, and human beings. There is currently discussion, a lot of discussion at uh, academic levels about whether or not chimps and bonobos should actually be reclassified. So chimpanzees belong to the genus Pan, and there's a lot of discussion, as I say, about changing that and actually making chimpanzees part of the Homo genus, so a different species of Homo. At the moment, they are still in our tribe, Hominini, but they are a separate genus from us. They are in the genus Pan. Likewise, bonobos are also in the genus Pan. They're a different, a different species. All right, and that brings us down to the genus Homo, which is where we are at. Human beings are also classified with other species. Um, so Australopithecus, Ardipithecus, and there are a whole bunch of different Homo genera. We are all classified as humans together. So human does not just refer to Homo, uh, to the genus Homo. It refers to hominins who are like us. Okay, uh, so Ardipithecus and Australopithecus, and we will look at those in due course. Okay, as we end this first video, I want to just look at how closely related we are to chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans. This phylogenetic tree compares our DNA, <coughs> that's the number in the yellow circles, so that's obviously a percentage, you times by 100, um, and at the same time, it shows the number of millions of years ago that we diverged. Those dates we get from the fossil record. So if you compare our DNA with the fossil record, our existing DNA with the fossil record. This is the sort of phylo phylogeny or phylogenetic tree that you come up with. So you can see that we share 99% of our DNA with modern chimpanzees. And that if you look at down towards the bottom, that we diverged from chimpanzees between four and a half and six million years ago. In the next video, I'm going to show you a different graph uh, of how this is explained. But essentially, speciation occurred between, we read it backwards, six million years ago to four and a half million years ago. So in actual fact, we diverged finally from chimpanzees four and a half million years ago. But our speciation from them, or the speciation events that gave rise to both humans and chimpanzees, started as early as four and a half million years ago. Now, if you're not sure what speciation is or how speciation occurs, go back and have a look at the evolution videos again, uh, both allopatric and sympatric speciation. Essentially, what we're saying is that over that period of time, the, about one and a half million years, during that time, human beings or proto-human beings and proto-chimpanzees, the, the kind of first developing forms that would eventually be known as human beings and chimpanzees, were able to interbreed. Okay? There was a lot of interbreeding taking place. We share a common ancestor up to about uh, eight million years before that. Uh, we were a single species or a single population group and from about six until about four and a half million years ago those populations separated from one another natural selection occurred independently in each of those populations with the result that over time differences accumulated so we became both phenotypically and genotypically different that process of speciation occurred over such a significant um, number of genes that eventually it became impossible for chimpanzees and human beings to mate and have offspring. Often when I'm teaching this, one of the questions that gets asked is, would it be possible, not necessarily physically, but would it be possible for a chimpanzee and a human being to have a baby together? And the answer to that is no, it would not be possible. Simply because, although physically we might be compatible, um, if you look at our genetics, that sort of thing, there are 
uh, again, go back to those speciation videos. There are reproductive isolating mechanisms that prevent human beings and chimpanzees from mating and having a baby that is that is fertile, that you know would produce offspring. So we are completely different species. We are related to each other, but we did not come from chimpanzees. Chimpanzees did not come from us. If we look at gorillas, you can see there on the, on the graph, 98% of our DNA is shared with gorillas. 97% of our DNA is shared with orangutans. So we do share similarities, but that's because we come from the same common ancestor. Remember, we're looking, I mean, if you go back to orangutans, that speciation event occurred 60 or started occurring 16 million years ago. The amount of natural selection that has occurred in these species, in all four of these groups since 16 million years ago is significant. So the common ancestor doesn't look like any of us. It shares similarities with us, but it will not look like us. Um, if you think of that image that I showed you at the very beginning of this video, the, one of the problems with that image is that the image that is used for the ancestor is actually a modern day picture of a chimpanzee or a gorilla. The ancestor does not look, that ancestor that existed 16 million years ago, does not look like the modern day gorilla or the modern day chimpanzee because natural selection had not yet taken place or had not taken place from then till now um, in such a way that it remained the same, if you follow me. So whatever the ancestor looked like 16 million years ago, we can, we can model that on computers, but we don't know for absolute certainty that that's what that ancestor looked like. That ancestor would have had some features that were gorilla-like, some features that were orangutan-like, some features that were chimpanzee-like, some features that were human-like, but it also would have had features that, we, that none of us have today, because natural selection has taken place over the last 16 million years. Um, and so it's very difficult for us to know exactly what that original ancestor looked like. But it definitely wasn't an orangutan, it wasn't a gorilla, it wasn't a chimpanzee, and it wasn't a human being. All four groups have evolved from a common ancestor, and all four groups share similarities or traits with that common ancestor as well as with each other.